Good morning, Doc and classmates. This is just a continuation of the report of Ms. Catherine Kappa for Chapter 6, Databases and Information Management, the Basis of Business Intelligence Management. The next topic is Big Data Challenges. But before we proceed, let us first know what Big Data is. Big Data refers to the data sets that are too large or complex to be dealt with by a traditional data processing application software. An interesting point to note here is that there is no fixed size that defines big data. It can be in petabyte and exabyte range or billions to trillions of uh, records from various resources. However, big data can be relative in terms of the organization that is handling it or the experience of the people that are dealing with it. It can be characterized into three Vs. The first one is volume. Big data can be a database that is challenging and big for an organization to handle or process. Volume is like the base of big data as it is the initial size and amount of data that is being collected. If the volume of data is large enough, it can be considered big data but it will change depending on the available computing power in the market. The second V is velocity. It refers to how quickly data is generated and how quickly that data moves. It is also an important aspect for a company's need that requires their data to flow quickly to make the best decisions on time. In healthcare industry, for example, there are a lot of medical devices today that monitors patients and collects their data. From in-house hospital equipment to wearable devices, this collected data needs to be sent to its destination and analyzed immediately. The last one is a variety. Variety is the diversity of data types. For some companies, grouping and processing of data can be a task when it is in a variety of formats. Since data can come from sources in and outside the company, the challenge in variety concerns the standardization and distribution of all data being collected, since data can be unstructured, semi-structured, or structured in nature. An unstructured data is simply the data that lacks any specific form or structure. It is also very difficult and time-consuming to process and analyze. Examples are document collections, invoices, records, and emails. Semi-structured data is the data that has not been classified under a particular repository yet contains vital information or tags that segregate individual elements within the data. This makes it easier to process than unstructured data. The last one is structured data. It is the data that can be stored, processed, and retrieved in a fixed format. It is a highly organized information that can be readily and seamlessly stored and accessed from a database by simple search engine algorithms. An example of this is the employee table in a company database that is structured as the employee details, their job positions, their salaries, and more that will be presented in an organized manner. Now that we know what big data is, let us discuss some of the big data challenges. The first one is insufficient knowledge and recognition of big data. Some companies do not really understand what big data is. It's storage, processing, it's important, and sources. For instance, if employees do not understand the importance of data storage, they might not keep the backup of sensitive data. As a result, when this important data is required, it cannot be retrieved easily. Hence, the management must ensure the awareness and adaptation of big data. With the help of IT department, of course, they need to arrange a number of training sessions and workshops, as well as supervise and manage the application and use of current big data solutions. The next one is data growth issues. Most of the time, the amount of data being stored in a data center or databases of a company increases rapidly. As a result, it gets very difficult to handle since most of these are unstructured data that might lead to possible delay in the growth of the company. Thus, companies should opt for modern technologies such as compression, tiering, and duplication. The duplication rather. The third one is co-founding a variety of data technology. Companies often get confused in selecting the best tool for big data analysis and storage. 
sometimes they end up making poor decisions and selecting inappropriate technology. Hence, uh, their money, time, and efforts are wasted. Thus, companies may opt to seek professional help. They can hire experienced professionals who know uh, more about these tools and can give recommendations and advice regarding the matter. The fourth one is lack of data professionals. In order for companies to operate modern technologies and big data tools, they need skilled data professionals like data scientists, data analysts, and data engineers who are experienced in working with these tools. Hence, they need to invest in the recruitment of skilled professionals or provide trainings and workshops for their existing personnel to be knowledgeable enough for the task. The fifth one is securing data. Another challenge in big data is its security. Most of the times, companies are so busy in understanding and storing as well as analyzing their data sets that they push data security for later, later stages. As a result, unprotected data repositories can become breeding grounds for malicious hackers. Hence, precautionary action against potential big data security threats must be established and companies can also hire cybersecurity professionals to help them with this. The last one is integrating the data from a variety of sources. Usually, data comes from different sources like emails, social media page, pages, and the like. Combining all this data to prepare a report is a challenging task, but data integration is crucial for analysis, reporting, and business intelligence. Thus, companies have to solve their data integration problems by purchasing the right tools like Oracle Data Integrator and Xplenty. Infrastructure of a Business Intelligence Business Intelligence, or BI, is simply delivering relevant and reliable information to the right people at the right time with the goal of achieving better decisions faster. BI is the process of transforming related business data into information information into knowledge, and when repetitive identification, turning knowledge into intelligence. BI requires methods and programs to collect and structure data, convert it to information, and present it to improve a better decision. BI also takes a vast amount of data generated by businesses and present it in a meaningful, actionable way. Say, for example, in a supermarket, you do not need to find an employee and ask him where the soap is located or where the beverages are. Because as you can observe, supermarket is organized into aisles to make it easier for customers to look for a specific product. Now imagine that these items in supermarkets are your business data and you need to collect sales, production, and accounting information. Most probably, you will go to three different departments to ask for this information and have someone to compile it for you. This is where the BI comes in. BI is all about taking your unorganized information and turning it into a tidy and accessible form like the supermarket aisles for you to be able to navigate this data on your own without relying to others. A modern infrastructure for business intelligence comprises a wide range of tools for extracting information. Examples are data marts and warehouses, Hadoop, in-memory computing, and analytical platforms. First is Data Warehouse. It is a system used for reporting, data analysis, and is considered a core component of business intelligence. It is a central repository of recent and old data that can be analyzed to make more informed decisions. On the other hand, Data Mart is a subset of Data Warehouse that serves the need of a specific business unit like the company's finance, marketing, or sales department. Here are some of the differences of Data Warehouse and Data Mart. For their scope, Data Warehouse is centralized while Data Mart is decentralized and it focuses on specific subject area. For users, organization-wide for Data Warehouse and a single community for Data Mart. The resources are also different. Uh, data Warehouse has many resources while Data Mart has a few resources. Their size is also different because Data Warehouse can be hundreds of gigabytes to petabytes, while Data Mart is up to tens of gigabytes only. 
Hadoop is a collection of open source software utilities that facilitates using a network of many computers to solve problems involving massive amounts of data and computation. Hadoop has two main components. The first is Hadoop Distributed File System or HDFS. In HDFS, data is distributed in many computers and store them into blocks. For instance, if you have 500 megabytes of data to be stored, HDFS splits the data into multiple blocks of data that are then stored on several data nodes. The second one is uh, MapReduce. So after storing the data, it needs to be processed. In a traditional data storing method, an entire data is processed in a single machine processor. Hence, it consumes a lot of time, but with the help of MapReduce, it splits data into parts and processes each of it separately on different data nodes. The individual resort is then aggregated to give the final output. Next is memory-based computing. In-memory computing solutions deliver real-time application performance and massive scalability by creating a copy of your data stored in these base databases in RAM. When data is stored in RAM, applications run 1,000 one time, times faster because data does not need to be retrieved from disk and moved into RAM prior to processing. In-memory computing platforms provide massive application scalability by allowing users to expand the size of their in-memory CPU pool by adding some more nodes to the cluster. In analytical platforms, commercial database manufacturers have created specialized high-speed analytical platform to analyze enormous data sets that uses both relational and non-relational technologies. Examples are Oracle Exadata and IBM Nutmisa. Once the data has been collected, it can be further analyzed using tools like online analytical processing and data mining. An online analytical processing or OLAP is an approach to answer multidimensional analytical queries swiftly. OLAP recalculates most of the queries that are typically very hard to execute over tabular databases. For example, a user can request that data be analyzed to display a company's products such as beverages, condiments, and confection in different measures and time dimensions. This OLAP cube are often pre-summarized across dimensions to drastically improve query time over relational databases. On the other hand, data mining is the process of sorting through large data sets to identify patterns and relationships that can help solve problems through data analysis. Unlike OLAP, data mining is more focused on the discovery and identification of outliers or correlations that should not exist. For instance, company may analyze its cash flow and find recurring transaction to an unknown account. If this is unexpected, the company may wish to navigate whether funds are being mismanaged. Next is text mining. It is a process of transforming unstructured text into a structured format to identify meaningful patterns and new insights. It is uh, consists of methods and technologies like keyword-based technology where the input is based on a selection of keywords in the text that are filtered as a series of character strings, not words nor concepts. Web mining, on the other hand, is the process of using data mining algorithms and techniques to extract information from the web. This information is obtained from web, web content services, server logs, and hyperlinks. Here are some of the comparisons of data, text, and web mining. For their concept, data mining processes raw data into a structural form. Text mining and web mining are subsets of data mining. Te text mining processes unstructured text documents into a structural format, and web mining processes data related to the web. For applications, data mining is used in the fields of medicine, marketing, healthcare, and the like. Text mining is used in the fields like customer profile analysis, biosciences, and more. While web mining is used to extract information from the web, analyze web logs, and the like. Uh, data format, data mining is stored in a structured format. 
the data in text mining is stored in an unstructured format and for web mining, data is structured and unstructured depending on the type of mining method. For their techniques, data mining is uh, uses statistical techniques, text mining uses computational linguistic principles, while web mining uses sequential pattern, clustering, and associative mining principles. Next is the web and databases. Most probably, a lot of us have attempted to order something online. If so, we are presumably utilizing a website that is connected to a corporate database and is only accessible internally. Say, for example, a client wants to load a website's content. The web browser requests access through the internet that is called the Hypertext Transfer Protocol or the HTTP request. The web browser then looks for the requested website's IP address by translating the URL of the web pages via the domain name system or DNS or by searching through its cache. This process locates the web server where the site's files are hosted. The web server receives the HTTP request and processes it through its HTTP server. Once the HTTP server accepts the request, it will search through server files to obtain the relevant data. After that, the web server returns the site files to the web browser that sent the request. Then, the web user sees the website content. However, if the HTTP server fails to find or process the requested files, it responds to the web browser with an error message that is like this. The 404 error is, is just one of the most common errors that uh, we usually encounter when we do our searches. Now, in order to ensure the accuracy, reliability, and accessibility of the organization's data, it will need a set of rules and procedures for data management. Any company, whether big or small, needs to formulate a policy for information as to who can access their data, who is in charge in maintaining it, and how it should be maintained are some of the rules that must be established. Extra measures must also be observed to ensure the quality of this information. A data quality audit, which is a structured examination of the accuracy and degree of completeness of the data, is the first step in the analysis of data quality. Complete data files and end users' impression of data quality can all be surveyed as part of data quality audit. On the other hand, data cleansing is the process of identifying and repairing redundant, incomplete, and inaccurate data within a database. It, al it also maintains uniformity of data sets. If erroneous and outdated uh, information are not corrected, it might cause bigger problems for organizations in the future.